All right, welcome back to another video. It's been a little bit of a while. The last video I filmed was the Crux build and the audio on that was just terrible. So I have upgraded to an actual like little microphone thing. So I should be able to wear this little lapel and hopefully the audio will be a hell of a lot better. All right, I'm in my office at the moment. I have been spending a lot of time in here just organizing the new tours and hire business, which is looking so, so sick. I'll take you guys out into the warehouse soon when we look at these new wheels. But something a few of you may be interested in, I know a lot of people in New Zealand that watch my videos are getting into gravel. I'm organizing a summer gravel tour, ride with me for four days and stay three nights in the Wairapa, go and do some of the coastal loops that I do. And we're also gonna chuck in some like private like farm stations in there. Like it's gonna be real, real sick. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, everything that we've been doing is on the website so if you like go on to cyclingtom.co.nz click the tours tab like everything that we've been working on for like basically the last year is on there and pretty much like 90% ready to go yeah I'll give you guys a bit of a walkthrough this is obviously the office like we've had before I'll be obviously heading into summer here in New Zealand so I've got my track bike ready and I've also got Anna's track bike ready so that we can hopefully go down and do some of the races in Wellington if we get time I really really want to do the Lake Hold Cup it's probably one of my favorite races track, road, or gravel um, that I do every year. So I really want to get down to that. The new addition in the reception area is this awesome map. So this kind of shows you where we're going to be like doing our tours and stuff. We're obviously based in Masterton, so this is, uh, Wellington's basically here. So we're going to be doing tours and bike hire and stuff all through here. We're slowly coming together. We're doing a little bit of a retail area in here with some Tafosi glasses, Giro gloves and stuff. And then this is our little kitchen room, a lot of smoko area, and also for people waiting for tours and stuff can have lunch and then buy themselves a drink. And then the old Crux has been sitting here looking all beautiful. How cool is that bike? But we'll get around to that soon when I put the new wheels on there. The biggest and coolest part is obviously when you come out here into the warehouse. This place is so full now. Like I remember when there was nothing in here and it is just starting to look so, so cool. We've already had a few highs. These bikes are all here just charging in the charging station. All of the helmets there and then everything in here. But a new addition to the tour is we finally got our hands on a 12-seater van. A, it's a brand new Ford Transit. These things are literally like rocking horse shit. They are so hard to get your hands on. It's actually uh, ended up coming about three or four months earlier than we would have liked, but when it became available, we are like, oh, we kind of, we have to get it. Like we want to be able to offer a luxury, nice tour experience, pick our customers up in a nice van, not the shop van, because that's not a nice van. Yeah, look at this. It's obviously halfway through getting a sign run at the moment, but it is such a sick van. Literally brand new. I think she's open. Oh, here we go. Super, super nice inside. Obviously the sign writing's getting done at the moment. Here we got the sign writing up here, but it's also just a lot more comfortable and a lot more seats. There you go, that's the big red stripe that's going down there. And then pull this back, and you've got an automatic step, and then you've got all these chairs everywhere as well. It's even got little chargers by every single one of the seats in there, and there, and everything. Yeah, we're super, super stoked to get our hands on the van. Uh, first tour that we're going to be using this at to kind of test it out. We've got the Tourist Southland, which we drive down to next weekend. It starts so literally about a week and a half away. So yeah, we can't wait to test that out. We've got the van and we're also gonna be taking, taking our trailer as well. Ooh, yeah. So obviously in the last video, I got this Crux built, so this is my brand new do-it-all bike, gravel bike, the S-Works Crux. I'm super, super stoked on it, but there's been a few issues um, with my wheels and stuff, and I'll show you guys soon, but we're gonna do a little bit of an upgrade on that, and then, um, yeah, I'm hopefully gonna take this out for a decent ride on the weekend and be able to take you guys with me. Right, so after what happened to me at the Graveler, I'm really, like, anal about my preparation, and also just, like these races, when you do these cool gravel races, they're awesome, but they are actually, you need to take into consideration that you are in the middle of nowhere, especially with that gravel race in Molesworth. And I had that muck up with my valves. Um, that was almost, that could have been very detrimental. If I couldn't get picked up like I did or get that spare wheel, that's a very, very long way from any cell reception or civilization. So you actually really need to look after yourself. That's one of the reasons everyone likes gravel is because you do have to look after yourself and look after your own bike. So one thing with these wind space gravel wheels is when you take them out, especially when you're in a rush and you put this wheel down on the wrong side, the entire hub just falls off, just like it did then. You don't have to do it um, very hard. If you accidentally lay it down on the wrong side, your entire hub is going to come off and every single one of these little pools is going to fall out into the grass and into the gravel. And you're going to have to get down like this and slowly but surely pick up each and every single one of them, and there's six of them. Six of them, these tiny little bits here. You're gonna have to put them all back in here, put this ring on it, and it's just, it's basically a recipe for disaster, and I'm no longer willing to take that risk anymore. 
and ride on these wheels, especially like the remote places that I'm keen to take them. So I've replaced the wheels with something I think is like kind of that equal. I didn't want to just go out and I could have just gone and bought some like Firecrest Zip 303s or some really expensive like Rovels or something. But I thought, let's do something that's still in the same nature of the videos that I've made, that's consumer friendly, uh, most people can afford, and it's a nice upgrade that's actually gonna make a difference and not gonna hurt the bank. We've got these super sick DK wheels. They come in at about anywhere between like $1,200 and $1,400, $1,500 New Zealand. So that's super, super cheap. But yeah, wait till you see these, the quality is unreal. Right, so when PRV first started bringing in these wheels, to give junior racers the option of a cheap, affordable carbon rim that was fast um, and you know pretty sturdy that they could do their junior races on, but, but they've gotten so popular that now like everyone wants to get their hands on them because they are super, oh no, I'm not on board. Everybody wants to get their hands on them because look at these. For the price, I think these ones come in at about $1,400. These are 58 mil, so about 60 mil carbon wheels. Disc and tubeless ready, like what more could you possibly want? Like, look at the state of these. They are so, so sick for the price, you gotta admit. So yeah, these are the DKs that we're gonna be running on the gravel bike, but I'm also gonna race them on my road bike when and if I need as well, because they are super, super nice. Like the build quality on these wheels is unreal for the price. Like usually you get a cheap set of like $1,000, $1,500 wheels and they're just absolute garbage. They've also got alloy spokes, much, much easier to service, much easier to get your hands on a set of normal bladed alloy spokes. So yeah, super keen to get these on here. And I think that's just gonna make the crux look even cooler than it already does. There she is. The S-Works cracks with the DKs on them. They're about 60 mil. They're very, very deep. But I do have a little thing for traditional framed um, geometry with these big, deep, deep wheels on them. But yeah, I think I will probably end up putting these on my tarmac because rumor has it that there may be some DK gravel wheels coming out with like a 27 mil internal. So that's going to be very, very exciting. But yeah, look at that. Right, so now that's done. Uh, let's give you guys a little bit of a tour around the shop because we haven't been in here, I guess, uh, probably upwards of six months. So a lot's changed from the original shop when we set up. We've just taken over one year and one week in this new store, so it's not really new anymore. But yeah, a lot has changed. We used to have a big front counter here, but this is all being um, revamped and remodeled into like more of a nutrition and like high-end area with like group sets and then a few like real um, top top end bikes. And then obviously over here we have the cafe, which is just humming along. Not a whole load's changed here. We have had to put some more tables and seating in here because it's just been so popular that the, the booth seating behind me, all these seats here and the bar lena just aren't enough, especially on a cold day when people don't want to sit outside because half the seating is outside. So I've had to put seating there, add that in. And over here we've had to put seating in as well. So we've got this really cool leather couch that's kind of like a custom area that if you're like keen to kind of like sit and kind of hear the workshop going on, which is actually quite nice when you're having a coffee sometimes. So got this really cool couch. And then yeah, other than that, we've still got the big 85 inch TV. We've been doing a lot of specialized helmets at the moment. So we've got the helmets, a whole load of full sus down here, a lot of e-bikes at the front. And then we've got this real sick family bike here that is for hire. Two little kid seats on the back and then this can be a bench seat as well. Heading around the store, everything's kind of the same. Accessories, wall are still the same. Most of our e-bikes are here. Our gravel bikes are all here, road bikes here. We've got one of the new uh, Trek Madones, a few Maritas, another Trek. And then this is exactly the same bike as what I've got at the moment, the SL7 Tarmac. And then we moved the um, Zwift area, so the bike fitting is now over at the warehouse. Kids bikes all through here. And then we have also got Garmin in the last few months as well, which is a cool little addition. And then we have so many of these ride magazines, like an unbelievable amount of ride magazine. And yeah, and then we've also got Dom's old original rock hopper as well. 
which is pretty sick. Yeah, as you can see, we're always trying to improve. I feel like the death to business is if you just stay stagnant, like water that isn't flowing, if your business isn't constantly trying to evolve and improve and like just do it for yourself as well. It's just gonna be like a, you know, a river that's not moving and you're gonna get algae and then the sails and everything is just gonna go downhill rapidly. But yeah, I'm super proud of what, um, me and my family have been able to build in the last, I don't know, 12 months. The business itself is over three years old, the Cycling Tom brand, but you know, in three and a half years, we've um, bought a store that I knew nothing about retail and then moved to this store, then also got our warehouse, opened this coffee shop and everything's just going up and up and up. And it is super, super cool, but obviously that does come with a lot of stress, like a lot of stress. I'm only 24 years old, bought the business when I was 21. I don't actually know anything about retail. I wasn't, I wasn't in a retail background. I wasn't the smartest at school. I don't have um, university entrance. I don't have any of that stuff. All I knew is that I wanted to make YouTube videos and create a brand. I remember watching like Tony Stark and Iron Man and being like, how cool is it that he has Stark Industries up on this massive building? And now I've got my name and my brand up on two very, very big buildings in town. Yeah, stuff like that does fill me with a lot of pride. And um, yeah, obviously we're only three, three and a half years in and we've got a long, long way to go. We definitely haven't got everything right and we have been learning along the way, but yeah, this has been a real cool process and one that I wouldn't have done if I didn't have the confidence um, of when I was a you know, 16, 17 year old running around with a camera and trying to make it big on YouTube. Obviously in the last year, YouTube's taken a massive backseat because this has become so much bigger than making YouTube videos. You know, 21,000 subscribers isn't gonna pay the bill and it isn't gonna buy me my first house and it isn't gonna buy me my first farm. So I kind of had to put it on the back burner, but it will always be the avenue that gave me everything that I have so far and then everything hopefully off into the future. So yeah, I thought I'd just kind of come on here and be grateful for everything I have. Um, and it has been a really cool experience and hopefully I can sit down in another three and a half years and you know, hopefully I've got a store in Wellington and a store in Auckland and one down south and we can um, sit here and then refresh on everything that's happened again. And like my granddad says, a good soldier never looks behind so we're gonna keep um, pushing forward and trying to go up and up and up and build this business into what I know it can be in my head.